Welcome to my humble abode, darlings. Come in out of the rain and get comfortable. I have a story to tell you, and I hope you enjoy. If you do, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Silence at Humanity's Edge by Scare in the Box The creature turned to look as something moves in the water near it. By the look of its face, this would be a human male. Hollow cheeks and sunken eyes accentuate the desperation of starvation. The uncut hair is thin and lank, but floats on the water, making it appear fuller. His face seems wrong somehow, warped slightly like staring into a mannequin's eye in search of humanity. Something nameless is off. The propositions are warped just enough to make the face terrible and sad at the same time. The eyes might be brown, but it's hard to know in this place. There's no light to observe these creatures except what we bring with us in our minds. More creatures like him move through the water. They aren't human exactly. Not as humanity was back when it was named itself humanity. But these odd creatures in the dark are what humanity has become. How they became this is unknown to me, as are any details not visually apparent. They do live on Earth or some distant world that humanity traveled to in hopes of saving itself. Those answers exist somewhere, but not here. To look upon these sad creatures swimming in a slow, decomposing structure at the bottom of the ocean brings me only sadness. I truly do not know, nor do they, I believe, how humanity came to this place. The male turns and swims away from the new arrivals. He propels himself down a metal hallway. His body is hard to make out in the dark, but it is shaped more like an octopus than a biped. Tentacles jab out at the water as he swims near the ceiling of the hallway. Above the ocean presses down with a pressure that would kill the odd humanoid creatures within. Neither the male nor the two females he swims toward ever consider this impending doom pressing down over their heads. They do not wince when the metal groans or wonder how long their home will last. Human society has a tendency to see the current state of being as the true one, the one that will last forever. The ancient Romans made this mistake. Colonial Europe made this mistake. And the USA made this mistake. It is human nature to see the present as an eternal expanse. But it isn't. It never was and never will be. Life is a state of flux, and forgetting that can lead to unexpected changes. I believe that the new humanity is evidence of that evidence of how refusing to believe in change can be the downfall of a society. This new humanity isn't capable of making such a mistake. Though their faces and heads may resemble twisted humans, they live blindly in a world built for them by past societies. They do not know who created the biomechanical bodies, a mix of flesh and metal, that carry their human heads around their ocean city they do not think to question why they don't have gills like fish, nor do they need to breathe like mammals. They do not know these things because their brains are no longer capable of higher thought. They cannot speak, though sometimes their blind eyes seem to seek each other in the endless dark they live in. They eat, they swim, they sleep, and perhaps they dream. Let us walk the corridors of this place the last stand for humanity. This is the silent place, the edge of the universe where humanity's last descendants dwell. Following after the three we first witnessed, who now group together in the dark along the ceiling, perhaps some sense will be made of this dark world. The two women cling close together. Their warped faces are similar to each other as if they are sisters or a mother and child. The man seems protective of them, some urge left over from earlier times, when true family units existed. They have turned to each other for comfort, 
but none of them knows how to provide the comfort needed. Instead, they swim together, calmed slightly by the presence of someone known in the dark nothing around them. The corridors twist in a seemingly endless maze, with large rooms in which the humanoids congregate, hands touching each other. Each hovers near the ceiling, leaving the floor empty. They seem to me to be endlessly searching for something that, even if found, they'd never recognize. They are hungry, but they know that food will not be here. It was never in the hallways. That's not what they searched for. Not at first. At the beginning of this famine, few of their kind found their way out of the compound. There's a vague awareness of this possibility of escape within the inhabitants. However, none of them will find their way out into the crushing arms of the ocean, or no more than already did. Even I do not know what became of those few. Perhaps they were lucky. Perhaps they found a new home. More likely, the ocean slowly crushed the life from them, and now they are bones on the ocean floor. Then there are wider rooms. Vast caverns of water and scum building up on the metal walls and floor. Here, instinctually, they knew, is where substance should be. <laughs> Some, like our two females, drift against the slick ceiling and suck at tubes descending from the flat surface. They suck and suck, meeting frustrated movements with their tentacles. They come away dissatisfied. Once food came from these tubes... But whatever race built this fortress is gone. No one exists to repair it, and slowly systems break down. The tubes dried out at a time until most only retain their vague flavor of food, and others still give nothing at all. Many have not fed in days. A few spouts that still give food have become war zones. The larger rooms were the feeding chambers, but since the food stopped... They are dangerous places to be. The man and the two females swim through. Quickly after failing to find foot, there are tiny flecks of food in the water, enough to tell them that one of the tubes is working. The male makes one attempt, only to be shoved back and feel the angry tentacle strike that serves as a warning to stay away. They cannot reach the working food tube, and something internal an instinct of a remnant of a thought, tells them that a try would be a faster, nastier death. The two females link tentacles as we might hold hands. The larger one leads the smaller one. Before they've even swum away, fighting breaks out behind them. Frantic waves alert them to the excitement happening. The three swim away quickly, lashing their tentacles for speed. Sometimes after the fight, there are bodies to consume. This sustenance might buy them a little time, or it might ensure that they became the next body, sinking lifelessly down to the floor. The creatures fighting do not consider how senseless their killing and struggle to survive is. They cannot leave their structure, or the ocean will kill them, and no one is coming to restore order. The prize for being the last alive will simply be to starve slowly alone in the silent dark. And then, when all are dead, eventually their structure will fail, and what remains of their bodies will disappear into the deep and feed the vast ocean. The man and the two females swim to a quiet room and settle in a corner, looking down at the floor below. Bones glimmered there mixed with metal and technology that none of them understand. The women yawn, curl their tentacles around the man and snuggle against him. Their lips move as if they are speaking, but there's no sound to warble in the water. They sleep. After a time, feeling at the tiny waves of water to see if anyone is coming, the man falls asleep too. They won't die. Not right away, but in a day... A few days, a week at most, they will sleep a deeper sleep. Looking on, logically, their path seems to be the wisest. The ones who fight, the strongest ones, might live another month or two. 
They do not see the hopelessness of their plight. But I can. Fighting serves no purpose. So perhaps here, in the silence, at the end of humanity, it is better to lie down and sleep. So quoth this raven. Thank you for stopping by, my darlings. It means so much. I so enjoy telling these stories for you. And here are some of my marvelous supporters. Please, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. If you give this video a like, it would help me out ever so much. Thank you, and have a lovely, lovely day.